Hello and welcome to another episode of Wired Unplugged. Before we dive into things and catch up with Aaron and Jake, I just want to put a little bit of a header at the front of the show here. This episode was recorded on uh, Wednesday the 8th of September, which means it was you know, recorded before the unfortunate passing of Queen Elizabeth II, something that, especially as a UK-based games company, you know, w- would have been pretty big news um, if we were to be including it in the episode. Uh, this episode was meant to go out the day after her passing. We decided to kind of hold it back as part of our media blackout. Um, as such, all of the news included in this episode is going to be in reference to everything leading up to that Wednesday. So you're not going to get anything from this week in particular. But fear not, Aaron and Jake will be back next week, catching you right up with everything that happened this week and everything that happened next week. And if they've got their time travel machine working everything that is going to happen in the week after. Thank you very much for your patience and your understanding. I'm going to hand you over to Aaron and Jake to go and entertain you and enjoy the show. Wired Unplugged. Hola. Hola. Hello. Como estas? Está bien? Yay. Si? I wish I could speak Spanish. I love uh, it. So do I. That's great, isn't it? I've probably you know. just offended a, an entire nation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Italy are fuming right now. They're like, what about us? Yeah. They got, you've got enough representation in this podcast, all right? Back off, Italy. Anyway, great start. This is a this is a horrible start. This is like the UN, but in reverse. We're just we're, we're waging <laughs> World War Three. Welcome to episode 29. Yeah. Jake and Aaron start World War Three. Uh, hey, guys. Um, it's uh, It's good to be back. Jake and Aaron here uh, with Wide Unplugged episode 29. Um We've just been, we've been speaking about um, all sorts of exciting things just before this podcast started. Um, but hopefully, you'll see in a few weeks. Me and Aaron have got some big ideas. Just going to leave that there and move on swiftly. Uh, Aaron, how have you been this week? I'm good. I'm good. That was a bit of a tease. That's that? You're just going to leave it there. Yeah, leave it there. Leave it yeah, there. Yeah, I am. I am Everyone yeah. will soon find out. I'm oh, good. I'm good. I've actually um, I've had a great week and it was only bolstered by i got a delivery yesterday i don't know if yours has arrived i yet. did yeah <laughs> okay I was, I was gonna i was gonna bring it but i didn't want to flex on the audio listeners because i would have had to just yeah. describe it yeah yeah she, she would describe it anyway length of wood in his hands um yeah 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 so uh yeah we we, we got us we got a special delivery didn't we Hell yeah, we did. I guess yeah. I just said that I didn't want to bring it because then we're going to have to describe it to the audio listeners. But now we're going to have to describe it to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah. at least it's fair that way. <laughs> so yeah, we did. Well, would you like to... You're probably going to do this a bit more artistically than me. Right? Hmm. It was around 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 7th of September. That's where we are, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a brief knock on the door. I trundled down the stairs. Confused. Confused. Tell tale heart this. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I opened the door. There's a postman there, very jolly guy. Yeah. Said a little hello. He strokes my cat, uh, my pet cat. It's not a human. Was it postman part? It wasn't. It wasn't, unfortunately. No, no. <laughs> but it could, have, it could have been. Yeah. It could have been. Yeah, I should have asked. Are you Pat? Um, yeah. Where is your black and white cat? Um, but yeah, no, he, he gave me this very, very long box. And it's like, what's this? What's yeah. this? I haven't, yeah. I haven't, I haven't ordered anything. Um, anyway ripped it open mm-hmm. it was like harry potter getting his thunderbolt no his firebolt broom yeah. you know in harry yeah. potter where yeah. it's like oh my god and wrapped it in um yeah I, I we have been gifted very lovingly by the rest of the wire team uh an arcade paradise skateboard which has the most amazing design it's on on, it's, on the back it's, it's incredible there's, listen it's, i'll tell you it, this there's it would almost chance. be criminal to use it right it, it, there's a, i'm i'm genuinely i was looking at mounts for it i'm genuinely and yeah. um, for the audio listeners uh like i have like a nice pretty clean white wall behind me that i have adorned with just a few pictures i think i might prop it up because it, yeah. it's that cool it's that cool i was thinking so, of really whacking sure. it above link maybe yeah it looks yeah. wicked yeah i'm gonna I'm, it's making me it's making me like it's like animal crossing ha- happy home designer here I'm completely oh, yeah. rethinking the feng shui of this room just because of this. It, it's that good. It's making me question everything. It's it's, it's a wicked looking. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's so cool. It's so cool. Um, but there's more. There's more. Um, included. Uh, well, there was a there was a code for the game, which yeah, yeah. Cool. Luckily, I've already had. But it's it's great. I'm like, <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'll give that to someone good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, because I bought it, right? 
I bought it. Yeah, I went and bought the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, included as well was a really cool USB um, tape cassettes player. For the younger listeners, what is a cassette, Jake? <laughs> a cassette, it's like Spotify, but hardware. And it yeah. can only fit like, I don't know, about five songs per side. Side, I hear you say? Side. Yes, that's right. Yeah. You have to actually flip it. You know, like... You know, when you're like making a waffle and you flip the waffle around, it's like that, but uh, with audio hardware. So, yeah, wow. that, that it's, it uses um, it's a tape cassette and it uses tape to kind of reel off audio. It sounds crazy. I know there's this thing called a Walkman. Just Google it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, honestly, um, it's kind of interesting, actually, because I don't want to go too off topic because this is a really deep rabbit hole. But like, in fact. I spoke about this with Steve when he came on to talk to us about vinyl, that tape is kind of coming back. And I listen to yeah. a lot of like weird, like, I don't know, fringy, off the cuff metal. And by fringe, I don't mean like the hair style. I mean like, you know, on the outer edges, like black metal and all of that stuff. And mm. loads of that is like tapes and stuff. And I just thought, well, that's cool, but I don't have a tape player. But now I do. Yeah. And it's one that can plug I, into your PC. I, and you I tell you what, I tell you what as well. I only I just discovered this yesterday, right? Um, it wasn't I wasn't going around looking for extra cassettes or anything like that. But one of my favorite bands is a band called Alter Bridge, right? Yeah. And they are on the cusp of releasing a new album called Pawns and Kings yeah. out in October, yeah. October fourteenth, I believe. Um, and I was looking because I I'd I'd wanted to get an exclusive vinyl that they were selling on their store but um i left it too long and it's sold out but i was looking for arrangements to get it delivered somewhere mm -hmm. because i'm not going to be around yeah. in october and um anyway i was scrolling down of what was left what other cool editions there yeah. were and they they have a pawns and kings cassette you can buy it on cassette and now i'm yes. like i might i might, I I might do i might do both i might get the the vinyl and <laughs> the tape I mean. just because the I've got this now. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you get the satisfaction of sticking a pencil in and yeah, twisting it back cool. to rewind, you know. This is really, really cool. And it means again nothing to anyone who didn't get one. So uh well done to us and congratulations. Yeah, this isn't even this it. isn't this isn't even a part of the show. No, this yeah, <laughs> this, this is, is just us being happy yeah. on air. Yeah. So woo. Yeah. Anyway, Today's yeah. Today's episode is sponsored by Wired Production <laughs> <Yeah>. Paradise. <laughs> yeah. We haven't even started the Wired Propaganda segment. So no. well th this has been it. Organic propaganda. And this is why you send cool stuff to people in the post. There we go. Marketing 101 there. Good lesson for everyone involved. Should we get into a bit of actual official Let's do propaganda? It. All right, Let's do it. I'm ready. Some government issued. Wired propaganda. Oh yeah. All right. So <clears throat> this is the part of the show where Aaron, the Minister of Propaganda, provides us with the latest and greatest from inside the headquarters, the secret bathrooms, <coughs> and the labyrinthian tunnels. <laughs> like the audio the listeners, powers. I think you like making some sort of weird joke. The, the inside the hidden HQ. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys know, yeah. right? No, What's that was just a genuine cough that I've got from drinking my coffee, which I'm just trying really hard to hide the logo of because they didn't pay us any money. Other yeah. hot beverage uh, takeaway companies are available. Um, all right, cool. So what's going on uh, this week at Wired? Uh, actually, there's a segue from our uh, impromptu... <laughs> good hiding. <laughs> I'm really scared. Really oh, good brand hiding, yes. Um... So actually, there's a good segue into what we were just talking about at the top of the show, and it's music related. And that is that the Falconeer official soundtrack is now available on all music platforms to stream. So Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, you name it, you can now work, work hard whilst listening to the beautiful sounds of the worlds of the Falconeer. And I think we spoke about this um, last week, not necessarily that the um, OST is available, but we mentioned Benedict's again and, you know, the mm -hmm. conversations that you and uh, he and Thomas had when he was on talking about the Falconeer. But the soundtrack is truly, it, it, it's wondrous, especially the work that went into how he built the, the tracks into the actual gameplay as well. Yeah. And this isn't just, hey, I'm going to blend from one track into another when there's like an, an encounter that's coming. Um, you know, you mentioned um, the yeah. spires, the spires in this the game, exactly and there's, there's all sorts, um, yeah. yeah, there's a really cool musical tapestry that's painted as you fly through them. That's yeah, like it, there is. It's so, built by the player interaction. It's exactly. great. So, like, yeah, it, it's a leap motif, right? If you're into the sort of mm. stuff, and and so the the uh, yeah, the conceptualization of like 
organ music to represent the tall spire buildings and stuff like that is is really great and i i actually you know do really 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 enjoy listening to video game soundtracks when i'm working and i think it's because it's like they're not as bombastic as a film soundtrack you know which is all like hans zimmer worship these days yeah there's a real art to making music for for games because it has to be and this is like brian eno said this about ambient music right which is the, the best way to describe it. It has to be as interesting as it is ignorable. So, yes. So that's yes. the real, real challenge. And the video game soundtracks are really great examples. But unlike a film, which has like, you know, those really over the top themes that are beating you over the head, like the Star Wars stuff and that, this is very, very, well, it's, there's loads of tracks. I think there's like 30 plus, isn't there? Because yeah. unlike a film where it's set to a certain pace like what happens if you just want to fly around that spire 50 times the music has to adapt to you right so music, yep. it's, so it's all made on these additive loops and stuff it's oh it's it's brilliant it was great to speak to Bennett about it actually uh, and if you haven't seen that episode you can actually go and, and find it it's like i don't know i think it's like episode 17 or something yeah. but um it's it's wicked and to have it available on like spotify and that because you know what yeah let me ask you this are you a bit of a lame ass like me, like where you love Spotify's little algorithm dopamine hit at the end of the year, where it's like, here's all the stuff that you listen to. Yeah, it's like it's like the PlayStation trophy kind of Xbox mm. point system thing, where I'm like, I'll listen to everything on Spotify because it's all adding to me total at the year, so I can see how much time I waste listening to music. So if there's a video game soundtrack I like, if it's not on Spotify, I have to miss out because I'm not listening to yeah. it on YouTube. Soz. So the fact that it is now is really really good. <laughs> there we go. So. <laughs> that's what i like and if you want uh, my favorite track on it, it's spy master's march by the way i love that yeah. from this yep Hell yeah. yeah there you go oh wow wow there you have it get okay. that one on your uh on your playlists <laughs> that'll be uh, that'll be that'll re- i reckon that'll be my top 50 tracks of the I mean, year. Yeah. How, how, how how would you describe um the falconer soundtrack to someone because it's 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 quite unique. It's quite unique. You know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of uh, interesting use of throat singing. Yeah, and it has. It has. What I like uh, about it is... Interesting textures. It is, yeah. I guess the way I describe it is it's like, you know, I guess the truth of the matter is, like, folk music is kind of the music of, like, the working class, yeah? It's like songs that were sung by workers and things like that. The Falcon has yeah. got this real thing like that. It feels like... when I, I can't use words that you should be able to use to describe it. I want to say folksy, but in, in your head, you'll think of like fiddles and da da da, but it's not. And it's not, yeah. it's not got, it's, it, it feels industrial, like as in it's it's done by the workers. But if I say industrial, you're thinking of like Nine Inch Nails. So it's quite hard to, to pin it down. What I will yeah. say is it has this nice mix of like, there's this human effort all the way through it. The throat, everything yeah. like that sounds like struggle and it's really good. Yeah. It's got this kind of Gregorian quality, it's good, but it doesn't feel too like transcendental and religious. Yeah, it's, it feels dead grounded. It's music of the world, people. right? Music of it's the world like of the great earthy and and the clashes that are happening between yeah, the people it's, it's, and the higher it's ups. Got, and... It's got loads. Honestly, honestly, has got loads to it as well. Like it, it yeah, there, there's loads to it, and I love that. It's a, it's a story in itself, right? It kind, of, it's a, a contributive yeah. element to the gameplay and the story and the setting. And like you said, it's one of those things that. You know, the desire is if you do music well in a game, that it's just it becomes a part of it, and it's it's not something that stands out as like, oh, wow, the music. It's it's a part of everything yeah, that is going absolutely. on. Absolutely, all of that information being taken in, and it's it, it just it just fits. And you know, for for Thomas to have found Benedict, you know, Thomas, you know, working on this game yeah. alone, um, to find and put trust in that one person that can bring. The vision of what he is trying to do creatively into was uh, it's it's incredible and i think people will be very happy to hear as well that um you know his music was on the uh reveal trailer for uh bulwark as yeah, well it certainly was um falconeer chronicles so so there we go you know you've heard some talk about the falconeer you've heard some talk about the falconeer vinyl maybe you haven't checked it out but now you've got apple music you've got youtube you've got spotify you've got one of them just go and type in the falconeer soundtrack and you can find the whole thing Gonna, by the time I finish a sentence, you could have done it. Do you know what I mean? Just have, yeah. have, have a little go. Skip through a couple after, of after you After you finish listening to this, if you yeah, are on Spotify right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or get invigorated by that and come back. And you'll feel yeah. like you want to ride the storm. You know. Anyway, cool. So the Falcon OST is yeah. now at your fingertips. Cool. Nice one. What else have we got going on? What else is that? I'm just taking a moment to shake my fingertips for the... For the audio listeners. Fingertips. I think the audio listeners get such special treatment from us. We really patronize yeah. you lot. 
everyone listening, we're sorry about that, but also you're welcome because we do make an effort to get you involved. Mm. We are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you here. Also, listen, all the listeners, yeah, can you stop slacking? Can somebody tell us the weirdest place that you've listened to this podcast? Like, I'd like it if you were like on a hike somewhere. Maybe you were somewhere weird. Yeah, I, 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 I enjoy these stories, though, because it's like, um, and of course, this, I'm going to use this as an example, but, you know, those people, um, you know, at launch of the Nintendo Switch who would post, you know, photos of them climbing Everest, playing Breath That's of the Wild I mean, and yeah. climbing the mountains. It's, it's cool, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down for this. Yeah, please let us know. I, I hope someone's listened to us at sea. Uh, <laughs> You can, you, can e- you can email unplug at wideproductions.com or you can tweet us, um, wide P, P for pirates. Uh, and, <laughs> and let us know if you've listened to us at sea. Yeah. I'm not or gonna send stop. a message in a bottle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you let us know, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> all right, then. Um, but uh, a segue, a segue. Yes. Another yes, way that people can get in touch is, um, is via... A brand new Twitter account that has been set up exclusively for Wide Unplugged, which is yeah. at Wide Unplugged. There we go. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Nice and simple to remember, but that is a place Maybe where... you should just do that, yeah. Yeah. You, 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 can, you can get in touch via at Wide Unplugged or Wide P, P for Pirates, as Jake rightly pointed out, with any questions. Um, the Wide Unplugged, um, the Wide Unplugged Twitter channel might show some bloopers from time to time. That Curtis wants to get back at me i don't know yeah um <laughs> this is our fantastic and hard-working yeah. video editor yeah. he makes no mistake. he is yeah all right jake come on <laughs> you're already his favorite oh yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't yeah. have to you don't have to uh, work you know what i mean i don't want to get blue shelled you know what I mean? <laughs> no it's true that's true that's true um i'm in danger do we know who runs the wired unplugged twitter account the ether all right well we'll find that we're gonna name that ether and then we'll get people to, tw- to tweet them and ask them questions. No, they're Irish. They're, they're called Ether. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. So that's cool. So we've got our own Twitter account now. We've got good. our own Twitter account. You can expect really cool updates, calls for questions yeah. uh, and topics as well, uh, as well as a little bit of uh, fun shenanigans that may not make it eventually as well. But, you know, everything always makes it really. But Yeah, I was going to say, we're one yeah. take wonders. Uh, the, the, but I have a feeling that Curtis is going to, you know, when we pre-record before the start and like the, the the theme tunes come on and we're like yeah yeah we talk about that, that's that's got that's gonna come up isn't it one day yeah that's, i hope not let's, let's see what happens yeah yeah all yeah. right cool so that's very good <laughs> we got our twitter account <laughs> what else have we got going on emotions people got emotional oh yeah some people have got emotional this week jake hmm. and two people have got emotional many people have gotten emotional but so sam sam clay yeah um, he um, is the producer on Arcade Paradise at Wired, and he works with Nosebleed and Wired essentially to to get the game across, work with yeah. milestones, blah blah blah, um, and is a bridge essentially between both parties. And this um, this is the first game that he has really owned himself, mm-hmm. right? And and Sam has a, a a really cool storied history in media and so on. Uh, in the past and so something really big happened and uh, to preface this as well a lot of really cool amazing people have been getting their hands on arcade paradise Mm -hmm. um it's it's really taken off which is incredible but there was one person there's one person that stood out and this is jeff gersman so jeff gersman ex GameSpot. um yeah, well, I'm, I'm, that's a bit of a throwback, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the start of it all, isn't it? That that game yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, X Game Spot, and then he previously was of Giant Bomb. Giant Bomb. So at the Giant Bomb po- podcast. One of the stuff. co-founders, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he he he's he's set out and done his own thing now. Um, but he has spent a significant amount of time uh, with RK Paradise. He's done several videos. He's done several really well received streams as well. Um, and Sam got a bit emotional about this when he discovered it because um, I think he put out a tweet as well, basically saying that you know Jeff Jeff is the reason why he wanted to get into games, into the games media and so on. Like he was yeah. a really big driving, not not personally, not like he met Jeff one day and was like, "Oh, go out and smash it, dead kid." But you know, he he just really appreciated everything that Jeff was doing with GameSpot, Giant Bomb, and so on. Yeah. Um, so the fact that a game that he has worked so passionately on has been getting 
um, yeah. some love from his hero is a, is a very big thing. And I thought, you know, this is something that we don't really talk about is, you know, how there are hundreds and hundreds of pieces of content that come out, right? And each one lands with someone in a very different way. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, that this is, it, 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 it is weird when something like that happens. I, th- I, I think so. I think, you know, in my job, I work with influencers, right? And like one of the hmm. things that like a lot of people say, uh, on all sides of the spectrum are oh just you know they're, they're just people at the end of the day and it kind of you know like i get to meet some like people who are like massive right yeah. and everyone's like oh they're just people but i'm not i'm like no they're fucking not they're fucking cool as fuck you yeah. know what i mean it's they're not it's not a mere person it's hideo kojima do you know what i mean i, I yeah. i'm i'm a fanboy mentality yeah. so i i get this story it resonates with me whereas like i know people who would be like cool if hideo kojima played arcade paradise so there'd be some people who would just like <laughs> He's just, yeah. a, he's, he's merely a guy, but no, it's very, very cool. And it's interesting. It, it's Jeff Kurtzman of all people, but for people who don't know who that is, do you want to just give a, the, yeah, a yeah, yeah, quick yeah. TLDR of this whole thing without yeah. getting too, you know, about it. Jeff Kurtzman was on GameSpot, which was like a, ma- a magazine. And for the young people, again, a magazine, it's like a website, but you print off and then you have to turn the pages <laughs> manually. Uh, so um, essentially GameSpot was like a video publication not a video, it was a video game publication right a lot of old school journalism and he jeff guts made this like stormer of a review against this particular game it got him fired because of the external pressure that idos gave to GameSpot. so then he formed giant bomb back in 2008 before God. before these like really so look content creators are personality driven media this podcast is like personality driven right it's me and it's me and aaron guys right this is the norm now it's people but back then it wasn't people you were just a singular voice that represented a magazine but giant bomb were one of the very first like new media types to do like personality driven video content all of the stuff that you know like you know like your angry joe and your completionist and all of that it all goes back to like giant bomb and, and jeff gersman's one of the co-founders of that so he was kind of like one of the pioneers of this entire thing, essentially, mm. for those that don't know who he is. He and was... I, I, the, the, the thing is as well, because I, I, remember, I remember towards the end of his time at GameSpot as well, was, um, you know, there was a lot of content that had started to come out that was kind of the genesis of what, you know, Giant Bomb and, and so on came to be. Yeah. Um, like, I, I, so this is, this is what you mentioned right about, of, you know, some people say, oh, they're just people. And you're like, no, not. Because for, for me personally, I can remember an episode uh, that Jeff did on GameSpot mm-hmm. back in the day, which was like uh, an MTV Cribs thing where you go around his house and <clears throat> it was like a knockoff of Cribs, right? But yeah. like what a gaming household looks like. And there's just this one segment where it's there like making some Frito bake thing in his oven. and i don't know why that sticks out to me but I remember oh that's cool i can relate to these people <laughs> Maybe they and then, are and then people. yeah 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 yeah. um but yeah no that, it, it's weird things like that like that that was that was a long 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 time ago and it's weird that that sort of thing sticks in my head because yeah. i think at that time as well it was like rich galloping on the spot on game spot as well yeah, and things yeah, like that yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so there we go these things so yeah but there was so, more so, emotional there's more emotional turmoil this week. Go on, turmoil. <laughs> yeah. So um, we had Gamescom, right? Gamescom uh, went. And one of the really cool things that happened during Gamescom, um, well, lots of cool things happened during Gamescom, but um, one chance encounter saw um, Reb Valentine from IGN, mm-hmm. um, previously of um, VGC, actually. Um, yeah. VGC? Was it VGC or GI? Uh, she works she works, um, it, it on GI one of the UK base. outlets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. GI Biz, I think. Um, yeah. And she, uh, Reb came along with uh, the, the IGN crew and they checked out The Last Worker, spoke to Jorg and so on. Uh-huh. Um, and you never know how those things go at the time, right? Because people are like concentrating, absorbing thoughts, asking questions here and there. It's like a and food then... critic, you know? <clears throat> They're just sat, yeah, 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 you don't know uh, until after. Yeah. Okay. And then walks off. But um, a, a really, really wonderful piece came out from Rev and IGN um, about the last worker, um, and it just hit the nail on the head of exactly the things that Jorg and the team that are making the game want to convey. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think Jorg respects Reb uh, and and their storied history. Um, and I think for him, 
and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think when you have someone of such talent and analytical skill, yeah. understand exactly what you are trying to convey. I think it's quite a special moment. And I think, um, again, that was just a, a nice moment to have that article come to light and to have the, the, the recognition towards all of the team and the story they're trying to tell put out to the world of, you know, via IGN as well, which, you know, I, I, no small it, some people may have heard of them, I, I think. But, yeah, um, no small feet. No, that's, that's wicked. Yeah. I'm glad about that. I got a bit distracted thinking of Jorg as like Remy the Rat from Ratatouille then making the last word. <laughs> and Remy yeah. the time was the Yeah, and he's got, got like Ryan. Yeah. Ryan is like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Jorg could train a rat to cook. He can control robots. He speaks about 20 different languages. He We've does, already yeah. talked about this guy's, you know, um, that's quite frankly disturbing amount of talents at this point. Yep. So yep. if he can control rats, I wouldn't be surprised. One for the conspiracy bank about you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So there we go. That's, that's, that's <clears throat> nice. That's the effects that it can have by some people playing the video games that, you know, we all understand are, um, you know, made by teams of people, swaths of people. And they're put out as products, but ultimately, there's a lot of human connection behind it all. So, very, very, very good. Yeah, and uh, for me as well, I think this is important uh, just to address the human element of how you know one piece of content can make very different impacts to different people and have like really yeah. big <laughs> emotional impacts. Yeah. Um, but also, just as a way of recognizing, because you know, it's it's very impossible for a developer to email every outlet that's done something and say, "Thank you very much. I love you so much." Yeah, yeah. You know, it's this. This is just. If there was ever any doubt, which I don't think there are, work is recognized. Work is recognized and, you know, it means exactly. a lot. Yeah, exactly. It certainly does. It can be quite a thankless task, actually, being a journalist, because you always, mm. you know, you, you, you say that blood You're in someone's that. crosshairs, right? Yeah, yeah, you are. You are. You are. And, it, and it's remembered forever. You know, you said there's mm. too much water in a Pokemon game too one time. Too much water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, yeah. we got one last bit of propaganda before we go to the wider world. It, it's, I, I, we, I call it propaganda, but just come back next week because there is something incredibly special uh, that is being announced. Um, oh. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a special it's a special thing. Uh, so we would I'll, love... I'll next week, yeah. Yeah. No. I, I, honestly, if you, if you listen or watch this, it'd be very wonderful to have you involved in what we're going to discuss next yeah. week and it's not our civil partnership is it aaron before anyone asks no no i mean that no. that's there's in a the bit past. of hesitation there that's good all right <laughs> news let's go <laughs> news breaks down from google all right uh so in this civil partnership aaron is the hunter gatherer he goes out into the world and he brings <laughs> news to me <laughs> And then I just go, huh. And then I put it on our walls, much like the Arcade Paradise skate deck we've got. Um, I think this week I had a little skim of the news and it's a bit it's it's a mixed bag, isn't it? It's there's a lot of interesting things going on this week. Yeah. I do I it's impossible to pick up on everything, right? Um there is one topic that we're gonna talk about and both parties have been in the news quite a lot this week maybe perhaps not in the most positive, supportive light, I guess. I think it's a, a bit clashy uh, in terms of some of the things that's going on, but we've, we've honed in on one thing to pick out. Um, yeah. Go on. <laughs> Should I kick off with it? I think we start with the, um, with the violence. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then so... it's aftercare. <laughs> <So>, okay. <laughs> All right. Soothing. Um, yep. Okay. 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 Let's do that then. Okay. So um, Microsoft and Sony bosses have been 360 no scoping each other in public, <laughs> um, trading blows yep. over the Call yep. of Duty and acquisition, uh, Activision acquisition, which yep. sounds like an episode of Big Bang. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah. And it, essentially, you know, we, we've spoke about this several times in the past as well, and right. this is. Um, the ongoing um, hopeful acquisition of um, Activision merging into the Microsoft family. Yeah. Um, and what this means. So um, Phil Spencer went on record to say, you know, post the acquisition going through that they would mm -hmm. commit that 
PlayStation can still get parity with Call of Duty beyond their current deal that's that's happening right now. Right. Um, now, why this is coming up quite a lot is because right now there is a lot of scrutiny going on with the Activision Microsoft acquisition, right? Yeah. Um, so that is going through a phase two of, of scrutiny by the, the powers that be. Um, and PlayStation are certainly trying to make it known that um, if this still goes through, it will significantly affect them, given the long-standing relationship and the power of Call of Duty on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. um, so, interestingly, I'm just going to quick. Um, I'm just going to quickly switch because I want to read this verbatim because I read this this morning, right? And I got a bit of a, a shots fired. <laughs> Yeah. Shots fired yeah, yeah, I like this. Um, yeah. So after after Phil Spencer mentioned about the several more years being at, um, you know being able to support Call of Duty on PlayStation, Jim Ryan fired back <laughs> with the following: "I hadn't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I feel the need to set this record straight because Phil Spencer brought this into the public forum." Microsoft yeah. has only offered uh, for Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years yeah. after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take into account the impact on our gamers. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality Call of Duty experience, and Microsoft's proposal undermines this principle. Right. I mean, well, like... like yeah, Jim Ryan, of course. Microsoft's proposal yeah. to buy Activision for themselves undermines the principle of PlayStation gamers. Well, yeah, of course it does. Why would they give a shit about PlayStation gamers? I don't understand. What is hmm? he saying? What is he trying to say with it? I just don't understand that part. Like, Jim, that's the point. That's why they're buying it. They're not buying it so you can all... Like, they're spending $68 billion dollars. They're not doing it so you can carry on having everything, or else they wouldn't have bought it. They're doing it to it's, take it, it away from you, Jim. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very it. interesting. It's very interesting, though, isn't it? Because um, Call of Duty on PlayStation is usually lauded as the supreme version, right, in terms of the technical yeah. effort that goes into it. Yeah. And yeah. what Microsoft is saying is that, you know, going forward, they will keep parity. So now, does this mean that? Activision, the Call of Duty teams are limited of putting the extra horsepower into making the PlayStation 5 version look better than the Xbox one. Um, and I, I think maybe that's what Jim's getting at. Mr. Ryan, Jim Ryan. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not his friend. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ryan. I, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I do wonder if it's a, if it is about the technical prowess and, you know, what is the reason for people to get Call of Duty on PlayStation going forward, especially if Call of Duty ends up in Game Pass. Do you know what I mean? That is a very real danger. Yeah, because... Um, on the flip side, though, it does give, um, from Microsoft's, pers pers Microsoft's perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it does give them the opportunity to earn off a competitor platform. Yeah. Um, you know, with the sales on PS5 and so on. But then does that does it become a, a weaker offer if Game Pass is involved? I, I, I don't know. It's a very interesting conversation in terms of, because we have to remember as well, Bungie have been acquired by PlayStation. Um, and, you know, does anything end up, does does cheap shots start to be fired from that relationship then as well? I don't know. So there's like, but, um, the, so the, so for those that are maybe unaware of the kind of nuances of like the the legality of things, listen it, to all of our previous episodes where yeah, we talk about it in depth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but, but the, the truth of the matter is like there's like some sort of like monopoly clause with things like this. Like yeah. for example, like let's talk about like well, I was drinking coffee from an unnamed coffee shop earlier, but if that coffee shop bought its rival it would have a monopoly on high street coffee so there's all sorts of like comp competition clauses and stuff like that right and as such the reason that this microsoft deal is going under some more scrutiny is because it's been deemed not this isn't my opinion by the way that, that, that call of duty has has no specific rivals that's the exact word in there which is bad news for battlefield yeah dice have really, <laughs> really <laughs> dropped the ball there apparently no no because so call of duty has no specific rivals which which means that it's of significant impact if call of duty goes to one and and as such it would and i quote create an inflection point in the market right 
So basically, Call of Duty, as it's like sort of standalone in its genre, um, it's like FIFA becoming exclusive. It would it would cause a significant upset to the market. And because of that, for the health of the general market, it might not be the case that the Xbox could ever have it exclusively, you see, legally. That, that's kind of what's going on. So Jim's basically kicking off about it, saying it's inadequate. Mr. Ryan. So yeah, right, well, yeah. I don't know. Jim, oh, you are his friend, exactly. yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly how we go way back. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, we're, we're part of a COD clan together. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's why he's upset because we can't play. on Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so yeah, like um, essentially that's 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 the long and short of it, isn't it? Right, that 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 he realizes how messed up it will be if it is only for three years. So th there'll only be two more years of of uh, parity, and actually, the, ma the the matter of fact is is that um, or the fact of the matter, should I say, is, is that PlayStation have had exclusives of Call of Duty for the last three or four years. They've ever had an exclusive map. They had zombies early, so yeah. they, they have modes getting... modes that last for like a year, right? It's like a yeah, year of exclusive. Yeah, for... yeah, yeah. They've had, they, tr traditionally they've had a great relationship, so it must be quite upsetting that like some you know such a good business relationship has been soured by a mere sixty eight billion dollar buyout but i mean yeah. you know you're gonna want to get the bang for your buck if you're spending an ungodly amount of money like that on something aren't you so interesting anyway and great use of 360 no scope and all of that uh, thank you thank you thank you i believe it's a colloquial term um but the, the, the one thing <laughs> the one thing i will say is there is no denying that call of duty is still massive right, right. however it is not it is not what it once was in terms of public eye popularity and yeah. so on in terms of being that main event every year do you know what i mean like that was what yeah. everything used to build to was the fifa call of duty battlefield launches do you know what i mean they were the the tent poles they were but i think it's dwindled not, not dwindled because again sorry it's still powerful but you know when you look at what has happened with the likes of genshin impact fortnite games like that um and how far they have come yeah. and risen up <sighs> I think I think the demographic might be outgrowing the the COD franchise. Basically, yeah. I think the COD franchise is, in, in my personal opinion, anyway, is still kind of going for that younger audience, and that younger audience are on. They are collecting waifus or or smashing each other to bits. With, yeah. uh, and then you alienate the people that are there for what they expect. Do you right. know what I mean? It's yeah, it's like well, exactly. if I wanted to, if I wanted Call of Duty to become Fortnite and have all these Fortnite modes, I. Would, I would just play Fortnite, and I don't want to do that. So exactly, exactly. So yeah, you know, um, what was I can't remember. Um, it was a stupid stat that we brought up the other day, uh, wasn't it? That it was the first time ever Call of Duty had, it dropped below a hundred million um, players. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the number, wasn't it? It was a hundred million, and uh, just a few weeks ago, that wasn't it? I think. Um, yeah. And so yeah, like we know that the numbers are still around that level, but you know, it... which are insane. <laughs> yeah, let's get that, let's get wrong, that yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, let's get that right. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, interesting, and and I guess we'll keep an eye on it as it unfolds because the next Call of Duty release is, of course, the reimagining, should I say, of Modern Warfare Two, which, which was, was a banger of the game. Which is actually the last one that I properly, properly was same like, dead into. Yeah, yeah. Same, oh, same, yeah. same. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, that was a long time ago now, wasn't it? A decade. I think. It was. It was. Yeah. All right. Cool. Was that on the three sixty. It, it, yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was on the three sixty. Yeah, yeah. AC one thirty forever, baby. All right. Cool. So, oh. that was, so, so that was our bad news. We're, we're pretty much. So don't worry. Get comfortable. Get a blanket if you've got one. Unless you're at sea, of course. Um, <laughs> actually, you probably have a blanket. Get yourself down into the engine room. Yeah, get in between the pipes. Exactly. Yeah, just do whatever. Stow away. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. So, what? What? Um. What else have we got? We got some. I think the rest of the news has been pretty nice, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, one of them's a bit of an existential <laughs> crisis waiting to happen. Well, actually. Yeah. 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 Um. But let, let, let's go with this. So, um. You know, after after all the controversy and you know stability issues and so on, um, CD Projects have announced that there is a brand new major DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, mm. which is going to be called Phantom Liberty, um, which is being described as a spy thriller, which is very intriguing, um, and it's going to be set in a brand new district of Night City, which is good. More areas people want to explore that city. Um, Keanu Reeves is set to return as well as uh, Johnny Silverhand. I yeah. think Johnny Silverhand. I think Johnny it is Johnny Silverhand. Silverhand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, um, this is going to be the only DLC for the game. Um, and it's going to become to new gen only, including PC and for some reason Stadia. 
Um, but I, I, think I think Cyberpunk Sp had a Stadia deal, right? Do they have like some right? It, it, something going on? I, I, th I think so, and I think the hardware on the Stadia servers can handle it, right? So it's probably it's that cloud. Thing. Because what, what, yeah, one thing they don't want is to put this out on uh, old gen and have horrible uh, hardware and, and and you know compatibility issues again. Yeah, and get pulled off the PlayStation Store again. So they don't want that. That was, which, by the way, happened. That's not slander. We've got the hard that, times, Jack. It was twisting the knife. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, just as a reminder. That, that's that's that's, yeah. that's really like that, that was the, a thing. That's actually yeah, yeah. the um the, the thing that can kind of happen, right? So they're on their best behavior. So I guess they're just basically taking no risks, mm. and 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 rather than you know really push it and and you know complicate matters. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it's 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 very interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, the game has come a long way, and you know it is now what it should have been at launch you know they've, they've been doing lots of updates and so on um and if you are lucky enough to have next gen by the way um because obviously there's still kind of a shortage of stuff like that hmm. you, you are getting a better experience so i i got it on playstation 5 and I, I was very fortunate to have no real issues with it i had a couple of crashes but i say a couple i think i crashed to the main like hub or whatever three times in the entire campaign right so like i i for okay and then a lot of the criticism around launch was like next gen kind of runs better so so you, you were getting a better experience anyway the bar yeah. was wherever it was but you're getting a better one and now they've optimized it across the board and it's been a bit of an interesting one hasn't it because they've not really gone full no man's sky on it and th you know they they, they uh, crucially i wonder if they're going to charge for this expansion that i don't know i'm going to assume yes i want to assume yeah but realistically the, the the optics around it I, yeah i understand in like terms of, what i'm saying is, is a, all i'm saying is it would be a great way for them branch. to get a favor if it was a bit of an olive branch you're right like, yeah. no, like, like look what happened to no man's sky undoubtedly one of the worst launches ever critically and commercially like in terms of the sentiment and yeah. now nobody nobody will tell you that no man's sky didn't turn it around it's an undisputed fact the amount of stuff that they've added to that game yeah. for free and it's on Switch. It's on Nintendo Switch it's as well now. What the hell? It's 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 what it's the it's the biggest comeback since what Final Fantasy fourteen. Like, yeah, however, it's the biggest comeback since like no no I'm not going to say it, it's fine. Since the tape, I was, I was going to say Paul McCartney, but he never really came back, did he? I don't know. No. I, don't, I don't really know. Did he? Did, no. Hey Jude, was that just him? No, nah. it's the biggest comeback since Elvis and his comeback tour. Let's say that. Yeah, all right, we'll do that. All right, I'm happy with yeah. all of this. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Though I like the idea of it being labelled as, you know, a spy thriller in terms of it, like uh, that mm. excites me. I'm like, oh, you know, to change up mm. the the tone of things seems cool. Um, the fact that there's new areas, um, new districts within Night City as well is great. The thing for me is that it's a shame that, and I say, I, I this sounds like a very greedy thing to say. Um, but the fact that it is being announced as the only DLC, because, you know, you, you spent so much time and effort building that world. And I think it is one of those things that would be great for, you know, additional world building and so oh, on. Yeah. And, and they got such, yeah. they got such vast source material they could dig mm. into. But I feel I like it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe, maybe they've yeah. got their losses with it because they, yeah. they've got to have a lot. What I will say though is, um, to try and you know inject a little bit of um history repeating itself positivity into the whole matter um dlc is a great talking point maybe we should talk about it one episode in a bit more detail and mm, i'd love to know what it, if you've got a standout uh I'd, I'd love to know if you had a standout but but what arguably is one of the finest bits of dlc ever released is the witcher 3's blood and wine Again, crit again, yes. not, not not my opinion really. Um I, I thought I thought it was good. My favorite ever is like the Bloodborne DLC. Uh whatever. Old it's it's a, it's like a whole extra game. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they say a new region, they could be talking about a new region like Toussaint from Blood and Wine. So what I'm saying yeah. is see they've done DLC before. And even the one that what did they do before Blood and Wine for Witcher through Heart, Hearts of Stone or something? That was good. That something was like that, yeah. So yeah. I'm wonder I'm wondering which which kind of ilk is gonna be, but but I mean, like, look, the last time that they did a DLC for one of their major release games, it was that and the caliber. And, and you know, one thing to remember, what the point of me saying this is one thing to remember is The Witcher 3 was one of the highest rated games ever. I think it's the second highest rated RPG ever. And the bar was that high. So to even put something out that doesn't even disappoint was hard. But Blood and Wine was 
spectacular by like most people's accounts. So like that's they, they can they can do it. Like you know, yeah. if anyone's gonna do it, it it'll be them, innit? So yeah, I mean, I the the example I want to bring up just because you know I always bring everything back to Nintendo. Um, what about you. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, yeah, right? Yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I'm playing now. It's great. And yeah. I bought the expansion pass straight away, which has several things that are coming out over the next two years, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Including two chunky pieces. And the reason why I bought into that straight away is in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, they, they released an expansion pass and they weren't very clear on what you actually get with it. And one of them was just the last, the final one was story expansion, right? Mm. What the hell does that mean? Just a new quest, blah, blah, blah. No, it was an entirely new game that was in an, a changed version of the world with new characters, with a completely new battle system, new voice actors, everything. And it was a meaty game, so so meaty that they released it as standalone as well on a cartridge. <laughs> Um, Honestly, yeah. So it's huge. But it's, I, I think you know, DLC isn't you know, it's not what it once was, and it has evolved it's for different people as well. Like CD Projekt Red, as you mentioned with The Witcher, they went to town. Like it, that DLC had no right to be so mind blowing. Do you know what I mean? Um, I never, the fact I, so much effort and stuff. Yeah, like that. I, I never understood that. I always thought like DLC was like you know, for games that kind of felt like they needed a bit more. But again, like to draw a comparison back to my favorite series that I bring up all the time, Dark Souls, games that like are, you are really on thin ice putting out a Dark Souls expansion because Dark Souls, everyone thinks is perfect. So why would you push it? Why would you risk it? But every Dark Souls DLC is a banger and everybody will. It's one of those annoying things, you know, where you can't play Dark Souls without someone going, oh, have you done the DLC? Oh, but... Mm. Huh. But have you done the uh, the Ring City? Have you like the, Bloodborne? The Arturus, <laughs> yeah, yeah Arturus are the best. You've not played yeah. Bloodborne unless you've done the DLC. It brings mm. the whole thing round, and yeah. it, to the point where you just think, why wasn't it part of the game? So like, yeah, I, uh, I the, the the one thing that blew my mind, especially on Dark Souls as well, where the additional content you think oh, it's, it's, it's content, I'll go and do it, but the effect that has on other things, if you if you like New Game Plus, and you go and do the young Sif quest, and then you go yeah. to Sif. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, out of order, mm -hmm. and the intro cutscene for that changes ever so slightly. Yeah, the, uh, this is what I mean. Like, there's, there's finesse. There's the little things. So, so, so the little look, things. Uh, basically, I guess the, the TLDR of it is that DLC is a great opportunity to either do a victory lap when you're already winning, to be an olive branch, or to patch some stuff in, and with CD Projekt, it could go either way. We don't know where, where they could go with it. It's exciting and it's ballsy. And if they charge for it, it's even ballsier. So we'll be watching. Nice one, yeah. CD Projekt. Let's go. Yeah. Right, cool. Moving on. There's something cool happening this weekend, Jake. Go on. Ubisoft Forward, mm. aka UB Forward. Sorry, that's, I think that's its official title. No, UB Forward. Um, yeah. UB Forward. UB Forward. No, UB Forward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Aside from new details being mm. announced for like games like Mario Rabbids, uh, Skull and Bones, which I think you did, you go and play. Skull I, did, and I Bones? did. I had a little spin yeah, yeah, yeah. Skull at Gamescom. Yeah, I did. very cool. Um, so new details on that, but the biggest part of um, the presentation at the moment, in terms of what's being teased, is going to be a future look at what's going on in the world of Assassin's Creed. Um, mm. Particularly, one thing that has been announced up front in terms of we're going to talk about this. Uh, is a brand new Assassin's Creed game called Assassin's Creed Mirage. And we spoke yep. about this previously okay. in terms of some of the rumors that came out. Um, and, you know, the the through line of Mirage seems to be that it's going to be a more traditional, smaller Assassin's Creed experience yeah. uh, set within Baghdad, I think, um, okay. which could be very interesting. So, so there's that, right? A more traditional Assassin's Creed game. Um, yeah, which is... Uh, as far as we know, as far as we know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then additionally, they're, they're also teasing a future look at the future of the series. And again, this is something that we've spoke about relating to rumors and the scalar technology and so right, on. And yeah. then there was a, an interesting um, piece of video content that was released by Ubisoft on Twitter, which was essentially what what I think from from just looking at it is, is, is like multiple generations from Assassin's Creed in the same in the same oh, thing the multiverse yeah the 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 multiverse of the uh, assassini 
Well, I guess um, it's all been about that the whole time, actually. So they can get away with that, hasn't it? It's always been yeah. about that, hasn't it? So I suppose... I, I, the biggest thing for me is, you know, the fact that I, I personally like the whole Desmond thing and, yeah. you know, all, yeah. Altair and Ezio all linking into this grander story and him building up his abilities through the bleed effect and so on. Yeah. I, I quite like that. And the whole Apple of Eden, the Templars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I, yeah, well. I, I got a stupid anecdote <laughs> about this. I didn't really like. I think I played Assassin's Creed like one, two. I think, play, I, think I played Black Flag because the guy was Welsh in it. And then, oh uh, yeah. So I spend a lot of time in Montreal for my job. Uh, half of the company that I work for is there. So, uh, and there's a lot of love. Like Ubisoft are in Montreal, right? Mm. So there was a. I was invited to the Assassin's Creed Opera, which sounds like an assassination attempt. Oh, wow. And yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so it was it was it was a sim- it was a symphony checking the shadows. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Uh it was a symphony and it was like the most gentrified, you know, YouTube recap video ever. <laughs> it was in chronological oh, yeah. order and so it was every single Assassin's Creed story back to back but you know with no words just like violins and shit. Mm. And the story is like when the way that it was put together by Ubisoft directly, right? The, the and when when you see it and you and you kind of get the TLDR from them when when you get that summary in that way put forward like that, you really buy into all the Desmond stuff, and you see you can read. What I'm trying to say is, when it's condensed and it, and it's lost all of the scope and the grandiose side questy stuff that you do in Assassin's Creed, and you take out the like the bird feathers, buildings, yeah, well, what, exactly. When you take that out, mm. you just get like all of the entire Assassin's Creed games squished together for about an hour, and you're just watching it. You really get it. You really assassin squeezed. Assassin squeezed, baby. <laughs> that's really good. That's that's fucking good. That is. So, uh, so yeah. What I'm trying to say is, like, I got it, and then I was like, right. It took you like 14 years to tell the story, and like, you know, 700 mm. hours of gameplay. But you get it, and so you can kind of see how when they're, when they're that into it, like, it, you know, it makes one big cohesive story. But it's just, yeah, it's it's quite hard to keep up to date with it all, isn't it, and stuff. And I think they are yeah. just kind of scope creep where yeah all the same I, uh, and... yeah I, I so i'm with you especially in the let's say the assassin's creed 2 brotherhood um revelations yeah. into black flag assassin's creed yeah, 3 the, the biggest problem with that for me was it was also condensed into a short space of time because it was almost like it became like oh this is a hit it has to become almost annual if it can be which meant yeah a few i'm not going to say shortcuts were taken because the games are good but there there is a bit of a chewing gum being stretch, stretched or in the words of uh, bilbo baggins like too much butter spread, spread over bread spread, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're watching the rings of power by the way we'll not talk about it right now but no no no, no. lord and the kings coming hell, soon hell yeah so you have great quote yeah no but you, you're right exactly it felt like it felt like what could have probably fit into one game kind mm. of you know and key ideas were spread out so um yeah it's it's nice it's good to see that it, it, it's been a few years now isn't it what was the last main the, the last mainline one was odyssey wasn't it i suppose assassin's creed odyssey i think, I think. so yeah i don't think yeah. there's been another one and that, they had like some expansions for that and and whatever and i think then they've been putting out some of the um the older ones on like the nintendo uh switch and stuff yeah like I, i've been playing that's that's how i've been playing uh the assassin's creed 2 saga the trilogy right um yeah, so i'm playing yeah. um two um essentially um i played i started assassin's creed 2 on yeah. brotherhood and then played uh revelations yeah i never played assassin's creed 2 so that's what i'm doing now that's and the, it's that's it, like it's the, nice the one isn't it? i've just remembered sorry yeah. it's not odyssey the last one was and it actually unity no no it was valhalla no. Valhalla, yes. I didn't Sorry. play that because I, I I got an early copy of the Xbox Series X, and uh, it came Did with you? a couple of games. And one of the games it came with was Falconeer, and I played that instead of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> That's true. So uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, that, so so that was the last one. It was Valhalla. Remember the Vikingy one that, from a couple yeah. of years ago. So they've had two years off, and there's not going to be one this year. So ultimately, it would be a three year break from the mainland Assassin's Creed series, which is the longest I think there's ever been since 2011's kickstart of it all so mm. yeah worth knowing worth talking about yeah. at least so whatever it is there's some you know hopefully they've had some time to think about stuff and we'll see won't we by the time this yeah. is out in the public eye it's tomorrow guys if you listen to this uh fresh if you're listening to this in in the past uh hey just go- just google it or we'll talk yeah. about it next week all right cool so nice one <sighs> what else we got 
I'm going to skip one because I, I can already hear Curtis just being like, the time, gentlemen, the time. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go into the one that is it's all you. It is all you. And oh, this one's here in here go. for you. So apparently Silent Hill 2 remake images have leaked online yeah. um which is coming just ahead of tokyo game show where konami have said that they are going to um bring a much loved franchise back to life now <laughs> i am not suggesting that this is going to be that game because no. um at the same time this was reported by uh, vgc uh they refreshed the trademark for suikoden um which is a really which is an amazing oh. Yeah. RPG series, like I, th I think if they can bring that back and do some really good things with it, it'll be amazing because I, I loved, I love that series mm -hmm. so much. But anyway, this Silent Hill Two remake is apparently uh, meant to be the game that we were talking previously from Bloober Team of the Medium. Um, yeah. Where, where are you? Where are you on this? Where am I? Because you sent me, you you sent me, you you sent you sent the link to this in in, in the chat when it happened on the day, <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh this is going okay, down. Good. Actually, going I, th there? I I think I tagged you on Twitter. Oh, it was Twitter. I, yeah, I it was Twitter. It was yeah, Twitter yeah, Twitter yeah, as well. Yeah, to make yeah, it public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, look, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, first of all, can I just say, and and and, and this is a, a a funny joke for anyone listening, especially any authorities. My wife has been hospitalized this week. She's fine, by the way. No, no big deal. But I, my wife is in hospital and I've been climbing the walls by myself this week. Seeing the Silent Hill 2 news. If you've played Silent Hill 2, that's funny. <laughs> Can I just say that that is funny? Right? Uh, so yeah, great time. To... <laughs> Sorry. That's really funny though. I promise. Actually, one of my favorite content creators has been replaying Silent Hill recently. So I've been watching them play it through again and they're like an authority on it and they've been um, Who is this? Ashley Roboto. She's been okay. playing it on Twitch and she's been like giving a commentary for the people who have never seen it and stuff. Yeah. But um I think I've seen something similar from um probably a friend of Ashley Roboto as well. Um Susie? Susie Hunter? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's spooky season now. Both amazing people. Both yeah, that, amazing yeah, people. They, they like seriously are. check them out. And, that, and that's why, right? It's because it's spooky season, so it's it's Hill season. So so look, right, um the, the, the story is this, if anyone wants to know. Uh, what we do know is this is this is fact. Konami did say four or five years ago, not Silent Hill related, just generally IP related. They are taking pitches from external developers in the West to, you know, what would you do with our IP? You know, what if we kissed outside the Pachinko Arcade kind of vibe? What would you, what would you do if we gave you this IP on loan? Because that's what they're in. They're in a licensing business right now, Konami. So I have a story about this. Okay. A personal story, but please carry on. Good. It's about I'll, kissing I'll, I'll and never okay, though. Is it about yeah. you pitching Silent Hill? Right, because yeah. either way. It's I how mean, we met. Yeah. How we met <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we've got... Um, so, so uh, the rumor is that the Silent Hill IP and many others had pictures sent to Konami, like job applications from developers with some screenshots, some potent, potential what-ifs. And then the, 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 the big thing that a lot of people are corroborating, including like quite well-known publications such as VGC, etc., are that three companies made the cut for a Silent Hill game. Sony Japan Studio, Bluber Team, and um, them lot what made uh, Until Dawn and all of that. Super yes. massive, maybe? Yeah. Is that what they're called? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Them. Uh, an episodic Silent Hill game. So th th that's the that's the current stance of the rumors, right? So new Silent Hill, yes, everyone wants it. We've already gone over this. Silent Hill Two is arguably the goat, in my opinion. Arguably the best game ever made. It's just so bad. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. It's it... so look. You know the interesting thing about that specifically is that um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm just talking off the top of my head. Mm. The um, the composer of Silent Hill Two worked on the medium with uh super massive right or a composer from silent hill worked on um the medium with the medium with bluber team yeah and then tease that we work i'm working on another game and it's the game that you hope it is that's right yeah so that's is that Akira correct Yamioka. am i making that up? that's it the guy known for the very very sad piano -y stuff yeah he he did he also did the contra sound of, in case you want to oh, wow. that yeah there we go yeah. um so yeah and and uh yeah he did so he he actually originally teased everybody that he was making some Silent Hill stuff. And he was. He did a little, little couple of stings, they call it. 
in, in, in the composing world. A couple of little short things for Dead by Daylight's pyramid head expansion. So, you know, he teased the themes and everyone was like, oh, he's doing Silent Hill. And he was for Dead by Daylight. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Then yeah, he did the medium and now he's like, guys, I'm back, back, back again. Mm-hmm. But for real this time. And everyone's losing their mind. So anyway, the, the, the point of the matter is, I guess me and a lot of... Um, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, right? Silent Hill 2 is widely considered one of the best games ever. It's like someone remaking Bloodborne, right? Good luck. However, Bloober Team have put out, you know, some... They've been, their output has been, not cr- critically, It's it's been middling, but the people who've enjoyed it have said they've enjoyed it because it it reminds them of the kind of the old school tank control survival horrors you see. So the fans of Blooper Team and, and, and the critical uh, appraisal it's had is basically said that they're quite good at doing this kind of old school stuff. So th- th- they're playing into that strength there. And yeah. um, if, that, if that's true, then, then you know, if, if these leaks are true, then it's Unreal Engine 5 Silent Hill 2 remake with the, you know, with a Resident Evil 4 Dead Space style camera. Yeah, and uh, it's been in the works since 2018. Okay, it's a long time. Yeah, but also like, if that's the case, how did they, is Unreal Engine Five been knocking about since 2018 or what? Like, doesn't make sense. No, does it? So, no, no. no, no. Um, I have, I have a feeling that. Um... <sighs> I have a feeling that because uh, I mean, similar to Wired, right? Like we we have titles that are being made on Unreal Engine Five, like Gory, for example, that started on UE4, and, and, it's just, and is now it's just been ported over. If you want to call it's it that, yeah. being massaged over uh, gradually. So, so it could, yeah, massage over gradually is great. Yeah, it gives me a real gradient feel. Huh? I think if they do announce Silent Hill Two at the Game Awards, I don't know what I'm going to do on this podcast. I think it, I just every time I speak, it just has to be white noise, like radio crackle. <laughs> I don't know what will happen. We're going to have to do a special. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, like what's gonna happen? But um, we we'll just do it live. We we'll do it live. The, yeah, Maybe yeah. we just we we just comment over the game awards and watch it live. Yeah, who does? Yeah, can you yeah. imagine at, so, at three a.m. in the morning, yeah. this UK is, time? <laughs> honestly, I think this is the main reason um, around the game awards that uh, you should follow the Wired Unplugged Twitter account. It's just to spam me because I'll read them all. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, and you can check in on me. Curtis will check in on me basically, um, and you, I hope. So look, look he um, won't check in on me. He yeah. will. You know how he, it is. He's you know what, you know what this is like. Yeah. A legend. <laughs> that's what he's like. So, so like, okay, we've got, um, yeah, maybe next week there'll be no Silent Hill news. But for now, I'm sorry that there's been three in a row. It's just something's happening. And look, this is what I mean. There's no smoke without fire. Well, there is on the internet. And we're on the internet, baby. <laughs> so, that was quite a lot of news, I think, this week. We covered, so as a quick recap, Jim Ryan and, and Phil Spencer basically, um, had a bit of a scrap. 1v1 on Rust. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> CD Project Red, DLC, uh, on the way. Keanu Reeves, yes. Paid? Hmm. Who knows? Assassin's Creed. This time next week, we'll have the info for you. We'll have the scoop, right? Assassin's so you... Creed or Assassin's Greed? Assassin... You will find out. No, if, we'll if find out. If you don't want to yeah. watch Ubisoft forward, don't. We've got you back. We'll, we'll be back next week to tell you about it. And... Uh, We'll hear me crying about Silent Hill 2 next week, too. Yeah. And we've got this big, powerful update that Aaron's promised us. Why? What could that be? Hmm. Uh, it's, it's, you're not ready. You're not ready. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, look, guys, if you want to get in touch, you can. You can tweet us, YP, for powerful announcement next week. Uh, there's the Wired Unplugged Twitter now. Go and, go and check it out. Like it's, it's where we live now. It's our spirit realm. Uh, or you can email us if you're older. Uh, it's unplugged at wiredproductions.com. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you're at sea, or, a yeah, in the listen, if anyone's at sea, yeah, <laughs> come on, I'll give you the, I'll give you a, a five minute segment if you, if you can prove that you're at sea, I will give you a spotlight feature on this show. <laughs> Maybe we can speak. Dial them in. It's got like, can you imagine tr- trout fishing in the background? Yeah, do you know what? Whale. Would be, I'm just dreaming at the end of this podcast now. This is how I want to end it. If someone proves they're at sea, can we persuade Benedict to make a sea shanty jingle just for that uh. segment? Yes. Wouldn't that be something, eh? Anyway, thank you very, very much for joining us. Aaron, it's been great to to be uh, here with you, the purveyor of all things, propaganda and news. And we will see you all next week. Have a lovely week. Stay safe and wrap up warm because it's getting cold out there, baby. Bye-bye. Wired. Unplugged.